thanks for the introduction, and uh, thanks, uh, thanks for inviting me to the UConn. And uh, today I will talk about the advanced process control and the global optimization for the complex processes. Okay, since my background is from the chemical engineering, so here I would like to show you this very famous decision hierarchy in the process industry. Here you can see that, oh, it pointed up. Okay. Here you can see that we have the different decision levels. For the, each level, they have a different um, time scale from second to the year. Also, they have the different complexities. So for my research, I will focus on the advanced process control level, the APC level, and the planning and scheduling level. Okay. To be more specific, this talk will include three parts. The first part is the MPC, the model predictive control for the nonlinear OD system. Second part is the APC for the PD system. So these two parts are in the APC level. In the third part, which is my current research work at MIT, it is global optimization under uncertainty. So this is in the planning and the scheduling level. So this is the project with the BP. Okay. So Part one, the MPC for the nonlinear OD system. So here in my research, I mainly focus on the MPC. The reason is that you can see the MPC has been widely used in the different industries. For example, you can find the MPC in every modern refineries. And you can see the MPC in the semiconductor manufacturing, pharmaceutical manufacturing. And more interesting, right now, people also consider to use the MPC in some small scale a biomedical device, for example, this artificial pancreas, we can use the MPC to control the injection of the insulin into the human body to keep the glucose in the desired, in the desired level. So MP, MPC actually has achieved great success. However, it still has lots of limitations or drawbacks. That's why here I want to solve them. So I will show you the uh, brief idea about the MPC, and then I will talk about the limitations. So, Basically, briefly speaking, the MPC is a discrete control system with a dynamic optimization embedded. Here we have this uh, op uh, dynamic optimization framework. We have the objective function. Here we want to minimize some performance. For example, for the control purpose, we want to minimize the deviation from the state to the set point. We have the model here. In this uh, topic, I will talk about the nonlinear uh, ODE model. However, we also have some constraints. Here we want this uh, chemical process state or, or the physical state to be in, the, in some desired range. Okay? This is the dynamic op optimization framework. And we solve it online to generate a sequence of control input. Okay? So based on this sequence of control input and our process model, then we will drive the predicted state to the desired set point. So this is only for the prediction. However, in reality, we can only implement the first control input. And then we send it to the real plant. We use the observer to see the real outcome. Due to the model mismatch, due to the disturbances, the real outcome is usually your, is different from our prediction. That is why we need to send this new information back to the optimization framework, and we resolve it to get a new sequence of control input. And we repeat this process. So this is the brief idea about the, about the MPC. So here you may have already noticed some drawbacks. The first drawback is that there is no robust stability guarantee. Because if there is a, a model mismatch or some other very serious uh, uncertainties, then with this finite control horizon, then we cannot guarantee the robust stability. This is the first limitation. The second limitation is, is that we have to solve this online, this dynamic optimization problem online, right? So if this is a large-scale process, highly nonlinear, then you, there will be a significant online computational demands. So this is the second drawback, and all my research in this part will solve this will solve these two problems. The first, let me talk about the robust stability. Here I introduce this robust this concept called robust control Lyapunov function, RCLF. Um, just in my paper, I use the simple quadratic function as the Lyapunov function. But in general, you can con consider some other types of the function, Lyapunov function. Here, our, um, if you have any question, please feel free to ask me. Don't interrupt me. So here we have uh, a process model. Here, usually, we consider so-called this control of fine system. 
Here we have the if and g. You see that they are the known nonlinear process uh, functions. A uh, delta f and delta g are bounded but unknown uncertainties. Okay, so this is the very specific system which we are concerned with. Okay, given this RCLIF, given this uh, process model, and then, then we can characterize, uh, we call the region of attraction, or call this robustly invariant site, based on this criteria, this inequality. So you can see this, I use the, this green ellipse to represent this ROA, the region of attraction. Here we can guarantee that, given this RCLIF, if the process state is within this region, then there always exists a control input to drive this process state into uh, to the neighborhood of this desired equilibrium. So we call this the this uh, red ellipse, the radial side. Okay, we can drive the process into the right side, into this red ellipse. So this is good. So given this function, we can guarantee the robust stability. But the question is about if the process state is out of this region of attraction, what what we should do, right? So generally, that's why here I further develop so-called one-step worst-case MPC. So the basic idea is that we only consider the worst-case model in the first step, okay? And after that, we use the nominal model. This is much simpler than the so-called worst-case MPC because in the co conventional worst-case MPC, you need to consider the worst case along the entire control horizon. So first, my first comment is that the worst case along the entire control horizon actually happens very, very rarely. So it means that the worst case MPC are usually very conservative. Second, how to figure out or how to find this worst case along the entire control horizon for this nonlinear system is very difficult. That's why here we only consider, I only consider the first step worst case model. It, it is relatively easy. And because also because we only implement the first control input. So given this MPC, we want the value of the Lyapunov function to be reduced after one step. Okay, so that's why here you can see that in every step, we drive the process state close enough to the ROA, to the region of, of attraction, and for further, we further put this RCLF as the terminal set constraint. And hopefully, they will, finally, this state will come into the ROA, then we are safe. So this is the basic idea. So given this one step worst case MPC, uh, I try to enhance the robustness. Okay, so this is why I introduced this concept. So you may ask me the question, how to design this Lyapunov function, because usually it is very difficult. That's why, generally, we, we, I use the quadratic function. And I need to build this, I introduce this. OK, this is a lot of mathematics, but I can explain to you. So this is a bilevel optimization framework. In the outer approximation, we, can, we want to maximize the p. The p is the positive, def, uh, positive definite matrix of this quadratic function. In the inner part, we have this Minimization and the maximization problem. Here we will try to characterize the level of the ROA and the characterize, characterize the level of the radial set, the green ellipse and the red ellipse. Here we want to, in, our objective is to enlarge the region of attraction and the reducing the radial set. This is our object function, uh, objective. So here I won't talk about the detail of this formulation, but here we have to use the dinkler batch method to handle the fractional programming in the inner optimization. For the outer optimization, I use the coordinate, coordinate search. Here, in this method, I will optimize each variable individually. So in each iteration, we only optimize one variable. So this is, this is my previous PhD work. So it is, it is, we can get a good solution. But as I learn more uh, technologies in the optimization, recently, actually, I figured out actually we can develop some more advanced method to optimize the P simultaneously. Every, we can optimize every element simultaneously for this bilevel optimization framework. So this can be my future research work. So, okay, now this is for the robust stability issue. So if you don't have any questions, so I will move to the, another one. So I call this performance improvement. Here for this performance improvement, I try to reduce the online, computa uh, online computational time and also improve the you know, performance of the controller. Here, basically, I use this method called the approximate dynamic programming. Or in the computer science, it is called the reinforcement learning. So basically, the basic idea is to say that given an initial control policy, it can be the PID controller, it can be my one-step worst-case MPC. I run it for many times to generate a bunch of data. So given this data, 
we can use the value function approximation procedure to approximate this value functions in the entire state, uh, process state space. So in our control problem, so here the value function is just this uh, deviation from the set point, a general quadratic uh, operator function. And then given this value function approximation, usually here I will use the, in my paper I use the piecewise polynomial function to approximate or to generalize this value function in the entire state space. Given this, and we can use this so-called offline policy improvement procedure to improve this value function. So this is a very typical method in the dynamic programming. Okay, so given this improved uh, value function, then we can generate a new control policy. And we repeat this process in every step we try to improve our control policy. So this is uh, a policy improvement. And also here, actually, you can see that in this, given this controller, actually, we only need to calculate the, the one-step control input because we have this value function. Okay? Whereas in the MPC, so we have to calculate the control input along the entire control horizon. So you can see that multi-step and one-step optimization. So definitely ADP is faster than the MPC. So let me show you the example. Here, this is a very simple example, the CSTR example, which is well known and widely used in the uh, references. Here, this is a typical control fine system. Here, I add some uncertainties in the model. Here, let me show the figure. In this figure, I show that the, if the initial state, process state is out of the ROA, and then Based on these two trajectories, you can see the two, two uh, state trajectories controlled by the one step worst case MPC, the black line, and the EDP method, the red line. You can see that both of them can drive, in this simulation, can drive the, them into the ROA, then they are safe. Second, let me show the, 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 the data here. Actually, when I run this, because we consider, consider the uncertainty, so usually I will run this many times with different initial states, with different sequence of uh, distances. You can see that if I use MATLAB to get the optimal solution, the MPC average, on average takes uh, 8.6 seconds, whereas the ADP only takes 0 0.1 seconds. It is not very surprised because in my simulation, the control horizon is 7 for the MPC, but for the ADP, its control horizon is always 1. That is why the ADP is much faster. It's very good for the online computation and online implementation in the embedded system. So for the average control cost here, it, the control cost is just the deviation from the set point. Here you can see that the ADP method can improve 10% compared with the MPC. It is not surprised because our initial policy is MPC, right? We try to use ADP to, to, to improve this policy. So that's why you can see some improvement here. So if you don't have any questions, I will talk about the second a region of attraction the, based on the RCLF, right? If your state is within the ROA, then there are always this is a very simple simple controller to drive it. We don't need to uh, solve the optimization problem. Okay, so the next part, the advanced process control for the PD system. So for this part, actually, first people always ask me why do I need to care about the PD, right? Because I think uh, I'm from the uh, chemical engineering. I know that lots of systems have to be modeled actually by the PD. You see that heat exchanger, fluid dynamics uh, the problems rod pump system, crystallization, battery engine, you always face some PD system, right? That's why here I really care about this. So here I will talk about this rod pump system first because I have a very interesting uh, story. Here, let me show the animation first. Here we have a pump, in, this is the well, and we have a surface equipment. We have a, actually we have a pump in the bottom of this well, which is connected with the surface equipment by a very long rod string, okay? You can see that due to the compression and the stretch, the length of this rod string is not constant, actually. Usually there can be three to five meters difference. This rod string is very long, actually. Here, people use this, we call the wave equation, to model the displacement of this rod string. And then here we want to, here the x represent the displacement of each element of this rod string, and this is the position. Here we want, here the basic idea is that we can only put a sensor in the surface. Okay, we cannot put, the, usually we cannot put the sensor in the, in the downhole because it's in you know, very serious conditions. So given the surface measurement, oh, sorry. Given the surface measurement, we want to estimate the downhole displacement and the downhole load of this pump. 
and then given this downhole estimation, we can calculate the oil productions for this well. So this is a very classical, very famous problem in the oil production industry, upstream industry. That's why Weatherford, uh, Shell, uh, Slumberger, they all developed their method of software to handle this problem. It is well known. That is why I can, why I can compare my method with the, their software result. First, I show you these two figures is the, downhole, the estimation of the downhole displacement and downhole load. So you can see that the blue one is my result and the red one is the result from software. So you can see that the difference is pretty small. Right? It is not surprised because we use the same model, same parameter. But usually for the commercial software, they provide this so-called periodical estimation, which means that after one stroke, they give you the result because they only care about the oil, uh, the calculation of the oil produ production. But in my uh, research, I will provide, also provide a dynamic estimation scheme. So the reason is that we know that if we want to do some controller design, uh, some optimization, we do need the real-time estimations. We need the real-time to stay in real time. That is why you can see that we have this, the, we still have this blue line, which is my real-time estimation at t equal to 6.3 seconds. First, the time delay of this estimation is very small. The second, you can see that actually they are still very accurate. That, that is my contribution to the industry. Okay, so hopefully you will be interested in my method, so given this um, success. So basically, I will use the spectral method to solve the PD, to convert the PD into a, an OD system. It's a very, very famous method. But the, basically speaking, the, in the spectral method, we assume that the process state X, the PD state X, can be represented by an infinite linear combination of this basis function, phi. And the, the A is called the modal state, which is the coefficient of this basis function. And then we use Garkin's model reduction to do the truncation. We can get a fi we convert this infinite dimensional system to the finite dimensional system. So we call this slow, slow model state system. Here, then instead of controlling the x, we will control the a to, to stabilize the process. Here, the reason I use that is from this table, because you can see that given the same number of state, the spectral method is much more accurate than the finite difference method. Right? Usually people will use the finite difference to control this, uh, convert the PD into the ODE for this for simple system. But here the spectral method is more efficient. So here my contribution, theoretical contribution, actually is to handle the radio, the truncation radio. Because by using the Garkin's uh, truncation, we always introduce some error into our model, right? This is not exact, we, not exact model. We got the truncation. So that's why here we have the capital R here, which represents the radio, the error. My work is to bound this arrow. We, I will show the, I will I calculate the static bound, or in further, I also consider the dynamic bound for this R. And when we design the controller, the MPC, when, when we design the controller and the observer, I always take this arrow bound into account to get a very rigorous controller. That's my theoretical contribution compared with the previous people's work. So, for example, I show this. Uh, fourth order uh, linear PD system. So it is a linearized chromato schwarzinski equation. We use this equation to model the falling thin film thickness. Okay, we have the boundary input, the air. Is the, we, we need to control, we, to control the, we use the flow rate of the air and the angle of this air to control the thickness of this X, the, the falling thin film. This is our fourth order parabolic, uh, fourth order PDE, so it's very difficult by using the finite difference. Here, I first use the spectral method to convert the PD into OD system, and then use Galakin's model reduction, and also I uh, designed this MPC by assuming that the, by, by assuming the full state feedback, which means that we can measure the X in the entire spatial domain. This is an assumption, and I will relax it in later. Here you can see that in the first figure, I show you that it's a stabilization after 20 seconds. It is not surprised. But here I also show, sorry, I also show another figure is the constraint satisfaction. Here the, you can see the blue line is my controller and the red line is the controller if we don't consider this residue, okay? If you don't take the residue into account, your, your result will violate the constraint. Because when you run the MPC, you solve the optimization problem. There are, there are always some constraints which are active based on your model, right? If you consider this, this uh, uh, transition model, then you always get some errors. Then you will see the constant violation. So that's my contribution to this work.
But here I assume that full state feedback, it is not very realistic in practice because usually we can only put a sensor in some point, right? Or in the bound, usually in the boundary. That's why here in the second project, I designed a controller and observer. Okay, given, sorry. Oh, it's the, the outcome. Sorry, I didn't show the Y here. Uh, it's the, if, if you put a sensor in the one point, you will, ma you will measure the, the relative thickness. We want, we want to con constrain this. Yes? Yes, okay. So I didn't show you the detail, but the bond, the, in, this, in this work, I use a static bond. I calculate the, because there are infinite uh, sequence of the models, fast model state, right? In the truncation procedure, in the galactic reduction, we discard this fast model state. The basis function, we solve the eigenfunction problem for the operator. Yes, we get the eigenfunction, and uh, uh, this eigenfunction will be our basis function. So it's well established in the mathematics. And uh, then given this, and then we, we know the eigenvalues. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yes, because we, if we solve this equation, we know the equation exactly, right? We can solve the eigenfunction problem. No, no, but in the afternoon, I will talk about the authorities for this model. Then if you know this very clearly, then can you, you can get the function of the eigenfunction eigenvalue, and then you can find the policy, the, the law here, and then you summarize all of this fast, infinite number of fast model states. Actually, there we have can get the, bond, uh, bond, the upper bound of this value and the lower bound. Uh, no, no, in, the, in this model, we don't consider the disturbance. Okay, thanks. But in the, in the afternoon, I will talk about it. Okay. Further, I also designed the controller and observer synthesis procedure here. We estimate, you can see the AU head. This is the estimation of the, our model state. Okay, so we designed the LKG, which are the observer gain and the controller gain. So given this synthesis procedure, this is a very typical procedure in the process control, right? So here, actually you will see that, finally, we want to decide the number of the slow model states, or we want to decide the truncation. Right, how to truncate our model to make sure that our error or this residue to be small enough. Right? Then in this project, I decide how to find the order of slow model states and how to design the feedback control law and observe again to obtain a closed loop system with large enough region of attraction. Uh, we also consider this region of attraction because we have the bounded, bounded input, so we cannot uh, stabilize the process globally. So, so here, let me show the result. So here we consider this second order parabolic PDE with bounded with boundary input and a boundary sensor. We put a sensor in the boundary. It's very it's very realistic actually, and you can see that we can build the observer and the output feedback controller by using the linear matrix inequality, because we can consider the bound. Right in this work, I consider the dynamic bound of the uh, of the of the state. So then we can still stabilize the process uh, successfully. So this is my. Uh, research work on the PD system control. So now, oh, sorry, let me talk about the, my current research work at MIT. This is the global optimization and the uncertainties. So this is a collaborated project with the, between the MIT and the BP. So the motivation. Here the motivation is that if you see the, some uh, lots of chemical engineering problems, you will see that all, they, are, they can be always built by the network, process network. For example, for this very hot topic, the metabolic network, or for this water network, or for the refinery, which is a process network, you will see a large-scale system, okay? So here, in order to design this process to the, get the optimal solution, usually you need to solve an optimization problem we call the mixed integer nonlinear programming, the MINLP. You have the binary variable Y, continuous variable, uh, linear constraint AX smaller than B, and you have, usually you have this nonlinear, non-convex constraint F, capital F. So usually, given this non-convex um, formulation, you will have a lot of the local optimal solution. Right? This, this is very complex. So in this project, we try to get global optimization, a global optimal solution 
for this MINLP for, for the MINLP. So the overview of this project is the refinery optimization under uncertainties. Here we try to decide the optimal crude oil procurement and the refinery operations to maximize the profit, meet market demands, and satisfy the quality specifications. Here we assume that we can, the BP can buy the crude oil from the international market, and we want to decide how to buy it to maximize their profit and achieve these three goals. Okay, so we publish the paper and also get the patent. So the first, I, I talk about the model one because it's the first model I established actually from this reference. And also this, this is a very simple, uh, highly simplified flow chart of a refinery in the Europe. Here we have some, uh, we consider some quality constraints for the final products. And also we, this is a very basic model from the reference, but we integrate some new operations. For example, for the refinery, we know that the reformer, the cracker, they can be working in the different modes. So we add the different modes into the model. And here we have the, very importantly, we have a very blending and splitting process operations. You can see the red circle. Here we have the blending for the, from the different modes and we have splitting. Given these operations, we call this pooling, pro, pooling problem in the refinery op optimization. For the pooling problem, usually we will have this bilinear term. We have to use bilinear term to model it. X and Y are all the decision variables. So you can see that actually given X, X times Y, this is non-convex. So this is the major difficulty in the optimization problem. Very simple term, but very, but very difficult for the global optimization. So that's what we, we try to solve in the first model. So here I also consider the uncertainties. So according to the BP's suggestions, so we consider the uncertainties in the uh, properties of the crude oil. Here we have the, we assume that the vacuum radio yield and the sulfur content are subject to uncertainties. Here in this table I show the nominal value, but in reality we have some uncertainties and we, in this project we use the Gaussian distribution to model these uncertainties. And given the distribution, we can, we use the sampling method to generate 120 scenarios with different vacuum radio yield and different, different sulfur content. You can see that we have a lot of scenarios. So, I have two comments for this in this slide. The first, Gaussian distribution is not necessary. Right? You can use any distribution you like or, I mean, I mean, to generate the samples. Right? And you can also use the historical data in the, in, in the refinery to generate your scenario. It's also okay. And the second, I generate 120 scenarios because of the demonstration purpose. But in, you will see the calculation for later. But in reality, you can generate any number you want. If you have more number of the scenarios, usually you will get a more accurate solution. Okay, so given this setting, so I will use the stochastic programming to solve it, to formulate it. So here in, the, in this slide, I compare the SP and the deterministic method. If you revisit the decision process, you will see that actually for the crude oil procurement, there are two stages. The first stage, we make the decision to buy the crude oil without knowing the true properties of the oil, right? We only know the nominal value from the website, but we don't know its true value because its value can change or vary month by month or day by day. So that's why here in the stage one, we make the decision without knowing the value. When the crude oil arrives in our refinery, then we can make some measurement to know the true properties, the, the true boiling point temperature, the other properties of this crude oil. This is called the uncertainty realization. Given this uncertainty realization, we make the decision to, we decide the refinery operations. Okay, this is a stage two. So if you see the deterministic method, you only, if you don't take the uncertainty into account, there's only one scenario, only the nominal scenario, right? So that's why you see that the one pass. But in reality, since we have the multi scenarios, so we consider the prob uh, probability and we try to optimize the expected profit. Okay, this, that's why the stochastic method is more suitable for this case to handle uncertainties. Let me give you more details. Here, okay, the two stage stochastic formulation. Here I have two blocks, uh, two, two box. The blue box is for the stage one decision to, oil for, to, buy the, to buy the oil. The red one is for the uh, refinery operations. Actually here we have 120 scenarios, so you can see there are many red blocks. Here given this scenario, this is a number of scenarios, we have a huge number of constraints, binary variables, uh, continuous variables and the bilinear terms. This bilinear terms is uh, non-convex, right? So it makes problem very difficult. So that's why here we use the non-convex generalized boundary decomposition, the decomposition method, we call the NGBD method to solve it. 
The first, people also try to use the Baron or Antigone, this very famous global optimization software to solve it, but we don't expect to get any solution because it's very complex. You will see the computational time in the later. So the NGBD method is develop, was developed by the, uh, our group, not me, but some other postdocs. But my work is to improve this NGBD method significantly. You will see the improvement in the later slides. Okay, let me first show you the result. Uh, the, the, sorry, the concept of the NGBD method. The key word of this method is the decomposition. The first, we decompose the stage one and stage two, right? You, we have the blue box and the red, red blocks. We saw the blue box only related to the oil restrictions, oil source restri restrictions independently, and we get a solution, a solution. This solution definitely is not good because we don't consider any refinery operations, right? You can see that we get the crude. We send this crude into each scenario. Since we fix this crude purchase, then we can solve each scenario individually, right? That's why here we can use the parallel computer or we can just assign each scenario to each microprocessor to solve it simultaneously. That's why it, it can be very fast. And then give, we solve this problem and we can generate a so-called cutting plan. We send this cutting plan back to the blue box to refine our solution. You can, you can guarantee that you can get a better, better solution. That's why here I claim that for the, uh, for the master problem, for the blue box, we get a lower bound solution, which is usually a mixed integer. We solved a mixed integer linear programming problem. For the, upper, for the, for the red box, we solve this each scenario to get an upper bound solution, which is usually an LP formulation. Here, the, I also mentioned that for, to generate the cutting plan, we need to solve the relaxation problem of the red blocks, which is a linear programming, which is very easy. Right? So here we can guarantee that the lower bound solution and the upper bound solution will finally converge together to give you the global optimal solution, to verify the global optimal solution. OK, so now let's, let me show you the result. Okay, for, by using the stochastic method, we can get 18% improvement. It, sorry. No, no, no. Baron will also provide the uh, upper and lower bound solution, but it cannot detect this decomposable structure. That's why Baron is very slow compared with this method for the stochastic programming. Yeah, for the 120 scenarios, uh, we show that the Baron cannot handle it, but we can handle it. But if you increase the number of the scenarios, our, we expect to get a longer computational time, but definitely Baron can still not handle it. Right? So the computational time of this method will increase linearly compared uh, with the number of scenarios. But for the Baron, it will increase exponentially. That's the advantage of this method. But definitely there is some limitation, right? Oh, in our in this in all the results I show you, I we, we use a very sing, a single uh, microprocessor. But I just show that it can be used for a parallel computer, but we don't implement it. But if you can implement it, it will be very fast, very fast. And also, usually we have finite number of the microprocessor, right? So in the future research, we may need to consider how to schedule the, our job, how to assign this each scenario to the different uh, microprocessor to increase the efficiency. This is a very interesting topic in the future research. Okay, thanks. So let me show the results. First, we get 18% improvement in terms of the profit. It is not surprised because you see that for the deterministic method, we only consider one scenario. But for the stochastic method, we consider all these scenarios, right? It's not surprised. But for the computation time, you can see that by using the game, I first implemented in the games to get a solution within, 12 hour, within the approximately 12 hours. But Baron and Antigone can not give you the solution within one day. They just run it many times and then the solution is very bad, far away from our solution. And our solution, the relative gap of this solution is 0.1%. It's pretty good. But recently, uh, one of our PhD student in our group, the Rohit, he implemented this method uh, by using C++. It only takes 10 minutes, right? The C++ has, is actually is much faster, is much better than the games. But usually, I implemented in the games, and then he used my uh, idea to implement this in C++ and it's very fast. So, so we didn't try the more numbers of scenarios, but I expect that it will not, it will, it will, will be very efficient. At 120 scenarios. Oh, wherever? Uh, I think I should, uh, here. 
the constraint number of variables, binary variables, and continuous variables and bilinear terms. It's a relatively uh, very large problem, actually. Right. Oh. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good question. Actually, I will. Uh, this is something we we developed. I, but I, I can talk about it. I can tell tell you. Actually, oh, sorry. Actually, for the C plus version, actually we found that we can run the optimization problem faster than the games. This is the first. So it it is faster. So in this implementation, usually I will integrate. We call the kind of pre-processing step. We call the interval reduction procedure. So in the interval uh, reduction procedure, we need to stop each scenario to tighten our bonds for the variable. Right? This is very, in, in games, it is very time consuming, but in the C++, it is very fast. That's why here, actually, in our implementation, uh, in the games, in, in, the games in, in the implementation of the games, I run it once. I only run this uh, optimization problem for the interval reduction once. Then we get a good bond. I think it's good, and then I run the this entire method. But for the C++, since we can run this interval reduction method, optimization problem very fast, so he ran it five, uh, five times. We can re recycle this process five times. And we found that our bond is pretty much tighter than the games, than the ones. Five times is, is much faster, I mean, it's much better than the ones, right? That's why we found that by using this pre-processing step, it will increase this efficiency of the algorithm dramatically. And I will talk about the late, this, this technique later. Okay, so that's the, you know, but definitely C++ is much better than the games in terms of this. When you load this model, it reduced the loading time very good. That's why our supervisor wants us to actually to implement it in the C++. Okay, so, the, okay, so model two. Here I'm, actually, BP is satisfied with our solution, but we are not very satisfied because I know that we still, far away from the real model, right? Here, that's why here I also consider to embed a nonlinear CDU model. Because in the previous slides, you will see that we use a const, we use, we just use a table to represent the yield of this CDU. But for the real CDU, actually we can build a model for it. That's why here I integrate this nonlinear CDU model. Here I use this uh, work from the Professor Grossman. He developed, he developed, he and the BP scientists developed this model. The design variable for this model is the cut point temperature. And so basically the idea is that we want to calculate the more flow rate in the distillate part and the bottom part for each cut. Then we can calculate their, their mass, right? So given this model, the procedure is that if we have the TPP curve, and then we use Aspen to generate the pseudo component, and we calculate the vapor pressure equilibrium ratio, and then finally use the fractionation index model to calculate the P, the more flow rate for each bottom and distillate. Okay, and then I show you this model. Given this model, this model is developed by the people in the scientists in the in, in some company. And here, the I pi parameter, which is the most important part, uh, can be known from the column test. And then we see that this value can be in the can, this, this parameter can be two values, which is dependent on the relationship between the bo uh, true boiling point of the pseudo component and the, um, and the, the cut point temperature. That's why here we have to introduce the binary variable V into our model, okay? This is first uh, implementation, so this, this is the first difficulty part because we introduce more binary variables. Second, if you, ca if you consider the equilibrium constant K, which is related to the vapor pressure. In Professor Grossman's work, they use this equation of this very complex equation to calculate the vapor pressure, the VP, right? You can see that this equation is very, very complex. It's not good for the optimization. That's why in their paper, they claim that there are some numerical issues for this model. That's why here we found that since the Ethereum variable, the, the, temp, uh, the cut point temperature T is within a small range, why not to use a surrogate model, the quadratic function? You'll see that the quadratic, we, use a, we build this quadratic function for each pseudo component, each cut within this small range. So, here, we, we, our work is to identify the gamma to gamma 1, gamma 0, right? We can see that actually the, we can get very accurate uh, uh, model for this vapor pressure. That's my contribution to improve this model, which to make it suitable for optimization. 
And then I also consider uncertainties. Here we assume that uncertainty is in the, in the, in the heavy part of the true boiling point curve. Here, in reality, we may have a, a bunch of these curves. But here we consider four types of the crude oil. And for each crude oil, we have two TPP curves. And totally, we have 16 scenarios. Okay. So compared with the model one, you'll see that we have, here we have only 16 scenarios. You, think, you, you may think that this model becomes easier, but let me show the detail. You see that since we integrate the CTU model, so we still have a large number of constraint and binary variables, continuous variables, and moreover, we have more bilinear terms and signal terms. You see that these functions are the, uh, they call the signal terms in the global optimization. So it becomes more difficult. We still want to use the NGPT method to solve it, but Unfortunately, in the conventional NGPD method, you cannot get the solution because it's really difficult, right? So that's why here I first show you that how difficult it is, okay? So we can, if you can only consider the nominal scenario, okay, it is we use the Antigone, or you can try the Baroon. They all have the same performance. So for, by using the Antigone, you cannot get the solution even, okay? That's why here I mentioned, I published this paper in the conference that we use this interval reduction method to reduce the bound of our variable, variable. And then you can use Antigone to get the solution within, okay, more, more than 4,000 seconds. It's very difficult, right, by, by only consider one scenario. But if you consider 16 scenario, then it, the problem becomes intractable usually. So that's why here I improved the NGPD method. I, I won't talk about the detail of this flow chart, you know. So actually here, I only highlight my improvement for this. NG, old, uh, a conventional NGPT method. The new features include the first, I enhance, I enhance the interval reduction method compared with the previous research work. Okay, I also use the adaptive piecewise convex relaxation. I, I have some extra slides to describe it if you are interested. So, I also, I use the local dual cutting plane method. In the conventional NGPT method, people develop this global, glo the dual cutting plane, dual cutting plane globally. But I claim that the, the local cut is better or tighter than the global cut because we only can consider a very specified region. That's why the local cut is better. And the, for, the fourth, I also make the NGPT method to ha capable to handle the non-separable case. When I see the non-separable case, which means that for the bilinear term, for example, you have state, stage one variable times stage two variable. If we have this kind of the bilinear term, then a conventional NGPT method cannot solve it. But in our solution, we can do use some reformulation to get a solution. So let me highlight, so sorry, let me highlight. So without the feature one, three, four, you cannot get a solution. So that's why we see that we improve it a lot. But for the feature two, actually we can, if you can also use the non-adaptive method to get a solution. That's why here I highlight the computational time and I compare this computation time for the the adaptive method and the non-adaptive method. You can see that by using adaptive method, it takes 16 hours to get a solution, but for, by using the non-adaptive method, it takes 27 hours. So we can see, you can see that we, every feature will reduce the compu computational time significantly. Okay, so this is the profit distribution. You can see that the green line is the distribution of the stochastic method. The, the result of the uh, stochastic method, you can see that by using this method, we can shift, we can increase the expected profit. Okay, so, sorry. Uh, finally, let me summarize my, my work. And the first, the research scope. Here, I've, in my uh, previous and current research work, I focus on the advanced process control and the optimization work for the complex processes and the uncertainties. You can see that for every work, I always talk about the uncertainties. uncertainties. We want to get a robust solution. And for the method, actually we have, we, I consider that, I focus on the MPC method and the reinforcement learning or adaptive dynamic programming. And for the PDE model, I use the spectral method to convert the PDE into the ODE, okay? And also for the optimization part, I mainly focus on the two-stage stochastic programming and solve it by using the improved NGPD method. Finally, for the ap applications, I consider this road pump system, monitor, road pump monitoring system, also, this refining process design and the CSTR control. Okay, so that's my talk, and thanks for coming, and I'm glad to answer your, any questions. And I have some supplement slide if you want to ask, you know, some questions. I, 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 I'm pretty happy to show that. Okay, thanks.
Okay, so that's a good question. Uh, actually, the point for the BP is that they will never show you their model to us. Right? This kind of top top secret to them, right? But it's fine. But they will check out. They come to the campus every two months and they check our model to see if our model is suitable or not. They found that okay, if your model is reasonable to them, or they can easily convert this this model or convert this method in, in used in their model, then it's fine. That's their principle. So. The scientists and engineers, they meet us very frequently to check this model to make sure that we are in the right track. But they will never show their model to me. So I don't know what their model is. But please remember that, the, especially for the fractionation index model, that's a model developed by the BP. I, I'm not sure if they still use this IFI model in their real application, in real, real, real operation, but this is their work. I, we, uh, we just borrow that and make some improvement. That's, that's. Yes. Uh, yes, you need, but you need to change the parameters. Yeah, because the, especially for the I5 parameter, they, in the paper, not, not my paper, private people's paper, they claim that you need to do the column test to see the, identify the parameters for the model. But the structure is pretty similar. And you need, if, but if you need to consider the different crude oil, you, you may need to generate different pseudo components. And, but the only thing is the change is the parameters. The structure will be kept. That's, that's, that's my understanding. <laughs> no, no. No, we can increase. But you see that it takes. 12 hours to give me the solution, right? So I just say it's 120 scenarios. It's a reasonable, right? Because when we develop the algorithm first, we cannot get the solution within 12 hours. It takes very long time. That's why I restrict this number and I improve this method gradually. And finally, we got a solution within 12 hours. But definitely, we can increase the number of the scenarios. That's why uh, we got the, the solution from the C++ by using the C++ recently. So that's why we have some plans to see if we can improve. Definitely, it can. We can write by using C++ with the help of our uh, uh, colleagues in the in our group. Thanks. Uh, no, but we after that we use the same procedure in the C++ and, uh, and GAMS, right? So if this, if you use the C++ to verify this bond, then usually it it, it is correct and uh, you know, that's it. We, so we I didn't we since we got the solution recently, so we don't I don't use it back. I guess the flip way would be if mm -hmm. you use one plus one, mm -hmm. no, it, it, it's 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 not good. It's not good. We try that. It's not good. You, if you try it once, the C++ is even, in, their, in his implementation, it's, it's even worse than the games. So because we, it, it, this method I implemented in the, by two people, right? me and the, the, my friend. So you're, there are some difference in the, maybe in the implementation, but the major difference is in the bond. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, here in that slide, sorry, I only provide uh, prepare one slide for that because for the uh, for the ADP method, we want to show that we can improve the performance. Right. You need to have a controller, like a PID controller and MPC controller first, and then 
you use ADP to improve it, no, right? So, on top yeah, 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 on the top of that. That's, that's why this, this is the value of the ADP. I, I don't suggest using the ADP independently because it's purely based on the data, right? right. right based, based on the data, based on the private control policy. If you, right, I tried that in my project, but it's not good. That's why you know, I, I, combine, I combine these two controllers together, actually, you'll see that. Okay, uh, Ben Pratt, Professor. Uh, according to my knowledge, right, the explicit MPC is pretty good for the linear system, and even they also consider the uncertainties in their uh, linear system. But for the highly nonlinear system, so I don't expect it. The expect, expect explicit MPC can work very well. That's my my perspective because it's very difficult to analyze this nonlinear dynamics, right? And for the ATP method, it since we can take this, we, we don't need, to, for the ATP method, it's a kind of a data-driven method. So we don't need to consider this dynamics too much. We, in my paper, I still need to consider it. But it's not, the computational demand is not huge. And also, we can take the uncertainties into account. It's, it is very suitable for the nonlinear process control. For the linear process control, yes, explicit MPC is pretty good. That's my perspective. Yes. OK. This one? So, at each one of these levels, how would you go about determining the best sample time or use time for each one of those activities? For a particular application? Yeah, it depends on the applications, right? For the PID control, usually it's, we need to get a, a sampling, we need to get the samples very fast, according to my... So what, how would you go about doing that? It depends on the process dynamics. Right? You, you have the model. According to my knowledge, I think that we, we need to analyze the model. If you have the, some chemical processes, it's not very fast, but for the mechanical system, it should be very fast. Right? And for the MPC, it's the same, right? For the MPC, usually you need to make the a decision uh, Several t after several minutes, and then you send a signal to the PID controller. So that's why you see that the sampling time for the MPC is slower than the PID controller. And also for the planning and scheduling, it depends on the project. Sometimes you need to make the decision in the week. But in our uh, research work for the refinery optimization, uh, since we consider this model for the months, so we need to make the decision every month. Minutes? Months. For, 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 the, for the planning and the scheduling, the optimization work. So sorry, what, what do you mean to? Have you guys used your approach to the evolving network? Because you feel that it's a potential. Uh, uh -huh. to be done in your work? Uh, no, no, no. But according to my knowledge, for the metabolic network, people use to consider the mixed integer, uh, sorry, the mixed integer linear programming formulation. Yeah. Right, because they use very, so if the MILP is pretty simple, compared with the MILP the first, but this method, the Bender's decomposition, not the non convex generalized Bender's decomposition. For the Bender's decomposition, we can use it to solve the MLP very efficiently. It means that if you have very large scale MLP formulation and you have lots of uncertainties, when you generate these scenarios, you can still use the Bender's decomposition by using this to get the solution very efficiently. That's. Uh, it depends, but I mean, for that. Oh, and so, so the variable is not very huge, right? You can use the CPLEX to solve it directly. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, you, for the extreme case, I, I'm not sure how uh, extreme case in your, in your research in the metabolic uh, engineering, uh, engineering, but in the extreme case, the, you, you will see that the decomposition method is always better than, the, than using the CPLEX directly. Yes, yes.
Oh, okay. Yo, no, no, no. It's very difficult to get you know, to get the experimental work. So all this work are the uh, the the these two examples in the part two are all based on the simulation, except this uh, road pump system. That data is from the industry, from their from their software. Yeah, it's from the based on the simulation. Because here, as I mentioned, I, we linearize this Kromato-Schwarzinski equation. The real Kromato-Schwarzinski equation is nonlinear PDE, right? That's why here this is the first step to handle this PDE system. That's why here I only do the simulation work. But in the in the afternoon, I will talk about how to handle the nonlinear, the real Kromato-Schwarzinski equation in my future research work. So this is only based on the simulation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's good. I mean, in the future research, well, I will try to build some experimental experimental work to compare it. Right. Yes. Scenario. Yes, you can uh, assign this by history. You can use the Gaussian distribution, or you can use the uniform distribution, to, for example, to let them to be equal. Or you can take, you can assign these scenarios according to your historical data. Say some scenarios happens very quick, uh, very you know frequently, and you, which is very important. You can give it more uh, weight or more probability, more chance. Right? It depends on your, uh, It depends on the modeling. Yes, the result will be will, result will be different. The expected profit will be will be changed. Right? It depends on case. So here we use the we only generate one hundred and twenty scenarios. So we we assume that each scenario happens uh, uniformly, with the same uh, probability. So this is actually a an approximate solution, right? Because we only know this one hundred and twenty scenarios. We don't know the if you have some unsampled scenarios, what what will happen? We don't know. Right, that's the drawback of this research work. That's why here in the afternoon I will talk about my future research work to handle this problem. I have figured out how to handle this problem, but in my future work. But in this project, we just consider this sampling based method. Thanks. Uh, Yes, yes. And therefore, treating all 120 is equally probable. Mm -hmm. It introduces a lot of error. Yes. I agree. Yeah. The error being done in a successfully presented solution like that? No, but I think it's a good point to consider the sensitivity of the solution. So, yeah, I need to do it. I will do it in the future, in the future research. But in the current research work, we just simply sample this scenario. Yeah. 